What's up guys? So I want to show you how to prep the stain and how to stain decks. This is how we do it anyways. I got this little mobile unit because it's real tight where we're working and I couldn't fit my trailer. So I bought a little five or six gallon per minute machine. Uh, I like to X jet. I like to put it on a little stronger. Some Everybody else likes to downstream. I just like X jet and I'm telling you. I'm, I'm going to start downstreaming though just because it's better for my guys. But anyways, neither here nor there. Basically, I put, the, put it down just to kill any organic growth. And then I take the uh, pressure washer and I'll go over and see what paint's failed, see what's not sticking good. And you can see as I go over it, it's lifting up dirt, debris, and also stain, like failed stain. So now I can see what needs sanded better. You could strip it completely with different uh, products they have out there, but they're super expensive. I, I always try to sell people on it, but they never go for it. They're like, ah, oh, just sand it up. They don't need it done again in another four years anyways. That's pretty much what I get told. Um, here's after you're done pressure washing... I like to use these Osborns for furring. Um, they have these paint strippers here, which work great, but they're super expensive. And then I use palm sanders and belt sanders. So there's my palm sander there. Uh, I'll literally go with 40 grit, 80 grit, and then you just work your way down to try to blend it in, depending on what you're, you're sanding. But um, yeah, that's the biggest pain in the butt is just, Getting her, getting that old stain taken off as best as you can. Finding out, uh, like right here, you can see it's peeling and stuff. You take a scraper to it. Right here, I'm just Osborning it a bit. You can see it's knocking it down flat. That way, when you restain and lock everything in, it can't, you know, it looks nice and presentable. It's not like all jaggedy and peely. But um, if you really want to do a, an extra, extra good job, a bell sander with like 40 grit, then 80 grit to the smooth it out even maybe 120 just to smooth out the stain I, I typically honestly just go 40 to 80 but uh this is uh just a scraper scraping tool and this works great for uh just peeling off loose stain or if you have, you've run into something that you need to scrape and here you can see the i'm just showing off the the grinding tool a bit and it just takes the stain off you just keep working it down i like to take as much off as possible on the baseboard especially because anything you leave will show a little bit and you really can't take your stripper wheel or your uh sandpaper over the nail holes or screw holes because it will just rip them up so i'll usually belt sand or grind or whatever and then up to those nail holes and then i'll use an osborne brush on an angle grinder to get where the nail holes are that way i'm just not tearing up sandpaper but you can see it just keeps coming along better 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 just keep chipping away at it and when you see those nails sticking up knock them in because you don't want your customers staining or uh, stubbing their toes sorry and this is bondo i know a lot of people use wood filler but if it's too thick of a hole it actually will not set up so i like to take bondo uh, that they use for auto repair, auto body repair. And I just fill in all the holes. If we put new boards in, we like to use the Bondo to fill in the gap so it looks more seamless. And we did run into one board that needed to replace, which I'll show in a minute. But these peanut rollers, these little tiny rollers, are perfect for railings. They will help, if you, unless you're spraying, and I just don't do enough decks to purchase a sprayer at the moment. I do a good bit of them, I mean, I guess, but... I usually just use tools like this and what I like to do is I'll bump it so when I'm rolling here see how I bump it one way and then the other way that way when you bump it it gets stained into the crack crevice or whatever you'd want to call it where those railings come up and attach to the two by fours so I'll roll in and bump that railing one way and then the other way and then just like this get that stain on there and then just roll it up to take out any runs drips anything like that and it's going to take forever still but using a peanut roller will definitely definitely save you time will definitely get the job done faster and always start from bottom up so right here i don't have much stain on on the thing so it doesn't really matter but for doing those railings if you start rolling from the top down what's going to happen is stain's going to build up and you're going to basically push it off the railing and then onto whatever's below. Always have tarp below or can like some, some sort of blanketing so that you don't make a mess. But yeah, you always want to roll from the bottom of, of the railing 
upwards. So you're chasing that stain up and not down. And then you can see right here for any boards that are like tight on the on the spindles, on the railings, you can kind of use your peanut roller to, hold on, I'm getting some stain off there, but you can use it to kind of like slide it. So you're getting and bump, like I do a little bump and a slide. And you don't want too much stain on there or else you'll be making a mess and leaving the runs. But see, just just enough that you can bump it like that and slide and then keep working over on that bottom board because you want to keep it all nice and if there's too much stain on it it'll show through when the when the project's finished so you, you got to have everything looking uniform you want to keep staining everything the whole way down <laughs> if you understand what i'm saying i know i'm not the best at explaining things sometimes i'm sorry but you want to make sure everything gets stained as you go if you get any drops or and then you just like swipe it with a brush that could show through on the finished project or the finished product so after you put one coat down the stain will actually kind of keep itself from penetrating and now i like to use a brush because using this brush not only can i get in the grooves and crevices better but i can build up the stain on top as like a topical coating that will hide more blemishes so after the like i just kind of zoom through the first coat and then the second coat is just me putting it in there with the brush and this was the board that broke we were leaning on it trying to sand it and it broke so we have to replace that you can see here we got bondo filling in a hole and then i tore this off with a crowbar took the nails out and we cut the new one to fit after we cut it to fit oh i want to show you this too see how you can't pull it right there sometimes when you use the hand the hammer you can actually put it tight on a nail and wiggle it back and forth and it'll completely screw the nail up but Sometimes that's the best way to get it out of there without ruining anything. And then you saw the board was there, bondoed, looking good. Everything was great. And here, again, just doing a second coat, getting in there, making everything look nice. And then once I'm done there and I start working on the floor, you can roll the floor for the first coat, but I just went straight to the brush. These brushes are for deck staining, and you can unscrew the handle and put it on a stick, like a broomstick. That way you can stand up and move faster so first cutting in i always try to put it sideways drip over the edge you don't want to be getting no stain on those brick you can wipe stain easily off of vinyl siding for the most part if it's uh, latex solid but this kind of stain you get it on brick it's going to leave discoloration pretty much permanently so i'm always real careful when getting near brick or anything like that and after one coat on the back end you can see where we couldn't fit the, the sander and stuff. It's showing pretty ugly after one coat. This is why it's important to do a heavy second coat. It'll blend all that in so you don't see the sand marks. So pretty much this is just the first coat. It's starting to look okay. And you can see here we got the first coat. It's looking pretty nice. Starting to come together. And then here is, I believe, coming up, I believe, is a second coat. And the second coat really puts it, like, really makes it look nice. You can see here before, this is before we stained, obviously, and then after. It just looks beautiful with that second coat. 